Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Yakir, the head of uh, business development of the company. And um, um, I'd like to uh, show you today, present to you today, uh, the work that we have done with our full range lenses along the years. And, the stuff, and a part of that, uh, we have been working for long years, along with our uh, uh, key opinion leaders worldwide. And I'd like to invite them first uh, and introduce our panelists to this event. So uh, I'll introduce them and uh, I'll let you know, uh, you, you probably know them by, by name, but you probably don't know a few other things about them. So Dr. Ruti Lapid, she's a, a doctor uh, based in the Netherlands. What you didn't know about Dr. Ruti Lapid, Dr. Lapid, please come in, uh, is uh, Dr. Lapid is always measuring things, even in her own kitchen. And uh, this is also uh, being expressed in the clinical evaluations that are, the <laughs> that are conducted uh, worldwide. These are some pieces from her presentations uh, uh, that she has used. Um, Professor Jorge Alio, please come to the podium. Uh, well, for Professor Alio is a widely renowned uh, surgeon, as you all know. But uh, something that uh, even surprised me, as I know Professor Alio for quite a long time, He's also uh, an archaeologist, corrector, collector, and uh, his specialty is in Mediterranean archaeology. He has artifacts back to the Solomon Kingdom in his house, in his own place. It's all insured. Don't try. Okay. And uh, our next panelist, Dr. Papaho, please come. Dr. Papaho is based in Cali, in Colombia. Uh, we've been working for a long, long time, and. Dr. Paparo, he likes to put everything accurate all the time, not only measuring the, like uh, Dr. Lapid, but very, very accurate. And what I learned recently is that he's really into tennis. He's a great tennis player, uh, uh, working with, uh, uh, with the IOLs in a similar manner. So we'll be talking about our full range lenses. So you all know uh, our uh, full range lenses. These were uh, introduced a few years ago. And these, were the lenses, these are the lenses that you already know as the C-Lens MF and the Bunny Lens MF. Uh, we have launched them of several years ago. And we've been working quite closely, as I said, with our uh, uh, key opinion leaders in order to investigate in more details about those lenses. And the reason that we did so is because we placed a lot of emphasis during our uh, uh, R&D. A, a process a, of making a very and highly uh, a, a quali qualified lens for a multifocal. And um, a, what we have uh, learned across the years placed us in a position right now that we'll be able to present the added advantages of the lens. And from that, we also derive that those are eventually full range lenses. So this is the, the focus curve of the lens. It was derived, Dr. Lapid, from your uh, experience with the lenses. My practice. Mm -hmm. So what I want to take you through this, and I want you basically to defocus from this. We're, we're getting a lot of data that we need to focus on the defocus curve, and we're being told a lot of things about a lot of lenses. But what I want you to see in this defocus curve is that the far and the near vision is excellent. It's better than Logmar Zero. So what we have is we have a little bit of, of change in our pockets. When we do implant these lenses and we're not right on target, we have a little bit of reserve. And this makes that our patients can still have a good visual acuity, even though they may not be right on target. So this is a little bit of a reserve that we have. And then you can see that we have this valley in between, which is true because it's a bifocal IOL. But then you need to think, what do we need? What kind of visual acuity do we need at the intermediate? So our patients see better than Logmar 0 0.2 for the intermediate, which is uh, uh, 6, 9, as, as you write it up in Israel. And this is excellent intermediate. None of us need the Logmar 0 for the intermediate. It doesn't exist in nature. We, as biological creatures, we don't need it. So. Yes, you can create it in a lens, but do we need it? No, we don't use it. So this is why the trade-off between distance and near with a good intermediate gives you a full range of function. None of my patients use 
classes for the intermediate with the sea lens. So this is the multifocal one. Okay. I would like to mention one, one thing that is important. If you look to your computer, or you, look what you have to look at intermediate vision, the characters are always bigger. So we are not dealing with the same type of characters for near and intermediate vision. This is one important thing to do. And with point six, I do agree completely with you. After seven years of using these lenses, I have no complaints about intermediate vision. So in my opinion, we, we are much more focused because of commercial issues in this trifocal considering which you would lose light for, for near, which is an important focus at least for my patients in Spain, at the cost of uh, having a little bit better intermediate while we don't need that much. And we don't need that much because in the middle vision is a kind of different animal. We're dealing with different type of characters. The, the distance is a, it matters, but the distance is adjusted by the task that we are performing. And we don't need that precision many times. And actually, I do agree with you, my solution is identical. I don't have complaints in the middle vision with the lenses. I do have complaints for near vision with the trifocus many times. Agreed. Yeah. Well, well, Professor, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Papalro. You've also made comparisons of the lens uh, to bifocal lenses. Yeah. Um, when I started working with this lens uh, probably six years ago, um, I started seeing in my practice that uh, my patients uh, were doing very, very well. And I started asking, uh, what does this lens have different from the other bifocal lenses? And I just realized that intermediate vision was the big difference. As uh, we were taught by Dr. Lapid, you can see the blue line uh, is the Acrylisa lens, the first gener generation, and it was really, really a bifocal lens. So if we can see that the intermediate vision is worse than 0 0.4, uh, all of those patients were very happy with distance and near vision, but they came to my office asking me for a pair of glasses for uh, computer distance. So when I started working with this lens, uh, none of my patients asked me for uh, reading glasses for the intermediate vision. And the far vision was outstanding, also the near vision was very, very good vision. So all of these patients are really free of glasses. And the other thing is that because of the very, very sharp far vision, you can have a little bit of uh, forgiving with the astigmatism result. So you can implant the lens in 0 0.5 or 0 0.75 diopter of astigmatism, and you are going to have a very, very uh, uh, distant vision. Thank you. But uh, th these, are comparison, these are comparisons for a bifocal lens, and uh, as you know, uh, uh, more and more uh, uh, and the trifocal lenses are being introduced into the market. And this is a comparison that uh, is made uh, uh, from the full range lenses uh, to the uh, fine vision and the uh, Lisa tree from publication that were presented in 2015 and 2016. Uh, Dr. Lapid, perhaps you could uh, elaborate a little bit on that. Well, in, in the trifocal eye lens, an extra focus is, is is created at the intermediate, but this comes at the cost, and the cost is that you have to decrease the all-over functioning of this lens. So you can see that in the blue and in the green line, we see that the distance is not on par with a very good bifocal eye one, and in the near vision, it's really not good enough. Patients want to read their eye drops uh, etiquettes, they want to read really small print, and they can't do this, so this gives a worse visual acuity for nearby, especially for the younger patients. Also, every focus you create, you take away some light because you have to uh, divert the light to each of the foci. They have less contrast sensitivity. So in terms of function, they're basically a little bit worse off, even though they think they have the newer, better product. Yeah, here in this graphic, you saw exactly what I mean. You have less light for near. That means you have less vision for near you have more light for intermediate, but look at the gap. So there is no free lunch. What you pay for intermediate is paid from the near vision. And that gives a lot of, of the profile of your patient. I think that if we are working in an educated environment, our people over 55 usually read on paper and usually read the near distance, and they are not happy with the poor quality of near vision. 
and they don't work that much in intermediate, and even that intermediate is not a problem. Well, all of us are screen agers. I mean, how many of you are on your phones right now? So this, you know, this is part of our life, and that's why biologically we're not really into using the very small print and intermediates. So this is basically that's how we're built. And the difference in the log mark is uh, in my hands with the uh, Hanita uh, full range, you get intermediate vision of 0 0.18 log mark. With the fine vision, um, I got 0 0.14 log mark vision for intermediate. Does it care for intermediate vision to have 0.18 or 0.14? It doesn't matter. You need a lens that gives you a full range distance. I think yes, that, that is another point. I, I really congratulate Hanita to, to create this concept of full range because it is not bifocal. It, it matters what on, on clinical grounds happen to our patients. So our patients have the full range. That means in, in far to near, without glasses, without any complaint. If they have good quality of vision, this is what we want. And so I think that we need to move from this uh, very focal, tri or bifocal concept to something that is more clinically valid, which is really this full range, what really means that we have all the needs of our patients complex. Thank you. So we, we talked in depth about uh, the, the focus curve. And uh, uh, one of the reasons that this the focus curve was uh, eventually uh, been established is because we, as I said, uh, applied uh, a lot of emphasis and uh, uh, efforts in order to uh, have the lens manufactured exactly uh, like we have uh, um, designed it. And for that, uh, uh, within Hanita Lenses, the R&D team, we have developed uh, a proprietary uh, technology in order to manufacture diffractive lenses that will uh, 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 maintain the sharp edges of the optical design, as you can see, or not, <laughs> as you can see in the steps, in the diffractive steps uh, uh, that are uh, presented uh, you with. The lens itself is very, very sharp. And the, the, the design that, uh, on which uh, the lens was made, the optimization, was using the Arizona eye model. This is an eye model which contains two other models. One is taking into emphasize the chromatic aberrations of the cornea, and the other one is the spherical aberrations of the cornea. Taking that into account, uh, we also knew that the lens itself will have better quality in terms of contrast sensitivity uh, and within stray light. With the contrast sensitivity, the, uh, one of the first uh, uh, um, evaluations that were performed were performed by you, Professor Valio, uh, and you have tested the contrast sensitivity between two groups. It's, it was remarkable because this is has been published in the page of ophthalmology. We have compared nine types of lenses, so it's, it's really a, a big study. And this lens did not compare a different than a monofocal, which is remarkable, and basically should be caused by the quality of the material and the quality of the optic, because otherwise the division of light should take some light less for far, and obviously you should uh, decrease the contrast. But this lens didn't have on clinical grounds on uh, contrast with the loss. On the contrary, restore did, and especially restore before. So it seems that we have remarkable changes in terms of the, of, the, of the quality of the design and the quality of the production, that means on the, on the technology involved in the production of the lens. A comment is, um, it, it's not a matter of more rings that you get uh, m uh, better intermediate vision. It's a matter of you improve the optical quality of the lens. So with the uh, AB number, you get uh, more uh, less less uh, chromatic aberration. So you can you you you, you find a, like a more depth of focus, just improving your optical quality of your design. Yes, yes, that's true. It's also related to the optical design, and as you said, also to the material itself. And, and we'll be touching this issue uh, just in a few moments. I would like to, go ahead. to make a point, you know, contrast in diffractive lenses matters a lot. There are three reasons for IUL explantation in terms of multifocality. The one is, number one, is definitely the quality of vision perceived by the patient as what's the vision, this kind of feeling that the patient prefers that I don't see well, I don't know what happens, it's 2021 20, and it's this in it. Second is distortion. 
Distortion happens precisely with refractive multifocals, and it's something that we cannot measure today accurately, but it refers to, to a feeling that the patient to be uncomfortable. And number three is inadequate performance for the distance that the patient wants to read. And number three and number one are properly addressed by this lens. So this is important. I have not, no case that has been explanted ever in my hands because of neurotation problems in the lens. I agree. I've, I've done over 500 of these and I haven't explanted one. So I agree with you. Thank you. And uh, these, these are uh, uh, right comments on the, regarding the contrast sensitivity of the lenses. And uh, a part of the contrast sensitivity uh, efficacy, uh, which is related to the lenses uh, as part of it, I get to talk. <laughs> <coughs> okay, you hear me. Oh, you hear me even better now, don't you? Um, so uh, we, we also investigated the stray light. And actually, when we have uh, launched uh, the lens a few years ago, uh, the measurement of stray light was not that available, and nobody really knew anything about it. And uh, one of the people who is behind uh, that uh, issue of the uh, investigation is the guy uh, that you see here on the, on the picture. This is Tom van den Berg uh, from, uh, uh, from the Netherlands, uh, who uh, raised the issue of stray light and how to measure it. And he has validated, they only validated the um, uh, equipment in order to me measure the stray light with the lens. Uh, and this is the sick one. The stray light eventually measures the total optical imperfection of the eye. And it relates to refractive index and the internal aberrations. As uh, Dr. Papao said, it also relates to the other number uh, and the material clarity itself, eventually. Uh, Dr. Lapid, you've been studying this issue for a while. Yes. So Tom is one of my teachers. I did my PhD with him. And one of the things that we are doing is we're basically every type of lens that we get, we measure straight out before and after surgery, and then we summarize. So. Uh, what you can see here in the, in the black line going up to the right, that's the phakic stray light with age. As we get older, we get more cataracts and we get more stray light. And 90% of our stray light comes from our own native lenses. The moment you make someone pseudo phakic, stray light decreases because we take out the cataract. So we also have a pseudo phakic norm which is lower than the natural aging stray light measurements. And what we did is we took uh, many of our C-lenses and many of our uh, uh, restore patients and we did a straight light and we saw that our pseudo norm for the Hanita lens is less than for the restore. So we're still looking into this, why is this happening? We think it has to do with material, the clarity of the material, but mostly also because of the optics. If the optic design is very sharp, very crisp, you will have less dispersion of light. You will have less backscatter, forward scatter. You will have less straight light, so better quality of vision. Uh, light scattering means uh, light that is lost for vision. Yes. And this is important. It has not been, uh, in my opinion, adequately targeted in any study. I, I really didn't care about this, and I feel sorry for that because it's very important. Probably reflects the quality and the value of some places in our clinical practice, especially in places with a lot of light, like it happens in Spain, here in Israel, obviously, Colombia, definitely. And this uh, sunny environment is for sure something like this should play a role. Yeah. Well, it's, it's even so that, you know, we're trying to, to do more cataract surgeries. I heard that yesterday 63,000 surgeries were done in Israel last year, which is quite high. It's nearly as high as in the Netherlands. This is a real Western society. So the insurances or the government will, at a certain point, tell us, you know, do a little bit less. And what will be the parameter for doing surgery? Will it only be visual acuity or only patient-related outcome measures? Or do we want something objective like stray light, which is very good for us because depending on the cutoff level that we will set, we will be able to operate even pay people with good visual acuity but a lot of stray light because visual quality is not just measured by smell and acuity. Now, in this graph, can I continue? Yeah. So, Jebos Labush is uh, an optometrist who did his, recently did his PhD with uh, Tom van Berg. And what he did is he made a graph for the pseudo phakic norm uh, in, in human eyes for stray light. And that's the lower black line. 
And what you can see is that all the multifocal IOLs that were tested, some are from my uh, clinic, some are from other clinics, and what you can see is with the arrow that the, the Juanita lens has the lowest stray light in quite young patients. And this is the point, the pivotal point is that if your patient is young, has a cataract, and you're going to exchange his lens for multifocal IOL, you need to be very careful to pick a lens with a good contrast sensitivity and with good low stray light levels because otherwise they will come back to you, they'll haunt you, they'll tell you something is wrong, my eyes are old. And they're right because their stray light is up. Yeah. Um, if we see that uh, graphic and, and we follow the lower uh, black line, it means like if we implant a lens, like the restored lens, is the dark uh, black uh, ball. If we implant that lens in a patient younger than 55 or 57 years old, we are going to be uh, above that line. So we are uh, in inducing a damage on the quality of vision in that patient. That's this very important, this uh, graphic. Thank you, okay. And uh, another uh, added value that we had from uh, having the production process in order to maintain the best optical uh, uh, quality of the lens uh, is, uh, as I said, a sharp edge lens. And uh, when you, we wanted to know how sharp is our posterior sharp square edge, uh, we turned to Professor Tetz's help. Uh, during 2006, Professor Tetz, and, uh, along with Liliana Werner, has published uh, an article that's called uh, eventually How Sharp is Sharp, and we added uh, exactly the same uh, tests uh, to uh, the full range lenses. Uh, what this test eventually uh, measures is the area uh, that a triangle will encapsulate uh, within the uh, square edge, in the posterior square edge. As, as, you can, uh, be, as you can observe, the sharper the square edge will be, the lower the area will be the smaller the area would be. And here you can see an example from the other lenses that uh, uh, were uh, uh, observed uh, from uh, other uh, hydrophobic and hydrophilic uh, uh, lenses. And as you can be impressed, the Hanita lens, the full range lens, had the smallest area. That means the squarest edge ever measured in our industry. Eventually, uh, we learned that uh, the, uh, the square edge of the lens is of 72% more than the, uh, than the best one uh, right after him. And here you can have an impression about how square the edge is. You can see the uh, SN6080 along with the full range, the Acreus and the C-Flex in comparison. And you can also uh, be impressed uh, you know, just by observing it, seeing that uh, the lens itself is very sharp. So we knew that a few years ago, several years ago, uh, but we needed to wait in order to uh, be sure that uh, we also prevent yakapsulotomy, we prevent the PCO, because there were a lot of uh, um, doubts relating into it that are uh, related to the material eventually, as it is an hydrophilic lens. So, Dr. Ruti Lapid, you have uh, 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 made a study uh, as part of your uh, uh, consecutive uh, uh, measurements, measurements uh, yes, disability, yes. Up to hundred and more than 270 lenses in the, on this part. OCD, yes. yes, OCD, right. So, uh, yes, in, what we did is we, all my patients come back to me for some reason, and uh, we know exactly how their progression of vision is during time, and what we noticed is that with the full range lenses, we have very little um, uh, PCO rates, and we need to do do few yags. And this is interesting because basically we know from the literature and from experience that in multifocal IOLs we tend to shoot out the posterior capsule much earlier than in monofocal IOLs, and we're actually below our monofocal rates in this. And this keeps level. This is really, I think, for the patient, it, uh, it's best for systems in which uh, YAG is being uh, uh, reimbursed, it's worse, but, but basically for the patient it's really good. <coughs> yeah, I have to mention that I have not yet performed my first 
their basic capsulotomy in these nets. You know, this is remarkable. And it's remarkable as well because the capsules are transparent. And you know that one thing that happens very negatively to diffractive multifocal technologies is precisely PCO. PCO makes a dispersion of light, and this light is capturing, is uh, decreasing a lot the conductivity, and indeed is one of the uh, initial reasons why the patients are not uh, comfortable with the vision is because PCO happens early in some models like the Arcanisa and has never been in my hands performed so far uh, as a Yarnisa Castrotomy once uh, this lens has been implanted. So, yeah, it's the same in, in, in my hands, is the lowest rate of uh, capsulotomy. And uh, recently was published that uh, the capsulotomy has uh, adverse events. Yes. So it's not like uh, just do it in all multifocal patients. We have to be uh, aware of uh, the potential complication of uh, doing capsulotomy. So, oh, Dr. Papa, you have also investigated uh, along the years the uh, quality of life for the patient. Eventually, what's important for the, from all the presentations that we have made eventually is for the patient to have a, a, a attaining a quality of life in which he can have all the activities he would need. And you have measured that along the years. Oh, yeah. Um, we start seeing the, the, the focus curve, what happens in the, in the lab, but we want to see what happens in the real life with the patients. And uh, so we did a BF14 in all the patients through the uh, years. And um, if uh, we can see the, the, the graphic there, uh, we see that the patient is able to have uh, reading a small print, even writing checks, this is the intermediate vision, or uh, driving during not day or night, that is the uh, far vision. So the, the focus curve, behaves in the same way in the uh, real life of my patient, at least. And if we, if we see the, the graph, zero means n n none of, of the difficulty, zero. Uh, one is little to moderate and uh, uh, worse. But if we see none of the patient were above uh, one, so um, the, the the real life of this patient through the five years of follow-up is showing that the full range uh, correction, uh, distance correction. Yeah. Uh, I can say I, uh, I just returned from Korea recently, uh, having a visit there uh, um, and with the surgeons who are uh, 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 using the full range lenses uh, for quite a while. And in Korea, they, uh, they, they practice a lot of golf. And uh, uh, this is the lens of choice for uh, the, most of the golf players uh, uh, within Korea, and that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting aspect. Uh, talking especially about uh, the intermediate vision that uh, is required. So, thank you. Oops, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Well, basically, we also do the VQF 14, and my my data is is more or less replicating uh, Lewis's data. This is really. Um, this is the way it works. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think that within this presentation, we uh, were able to uh, show you that, uh, uh, that the full range lenses have the lowest stray light measure uh, and uh, excellent contrast sensitivity and a functional intermediate vision allowing your patients for a full range vision, vision and high quality of life. And uh, please. And uh, I'll let uh, Oti say one more thing. Yes. Well, you know, it's, this is a little bit anecdotal. I think you, or most of you know that my mom was an ophthalmologist, and when I was a child, she used to take me to the ESCRS. And I remember one ESCRS that Mike Blumenthal was up on the podium, and this was in the late 70s, early 80s. And people were asking him, listen, when you will have a cataract, would you like one of those lenses implanted in your eye? And he was very blunt, he said no. So in this train of thought this morning, I tackled Jorge and asked him, you know, when we become adults, what kind of lens would you like to, to have when you have a cataract? <laughs> you didn't have to think. You said a C-lens or a full range lens. And I, I must tell you, I've already been thinking, you know, if this happens to me, this is the one that I'd like. And this is not marketing. You know, we're all considering what's going to happen and what we need and what we want. 
from my practice, my choice is quite clear. And yours is too. Absolutely, yeah, because you know, we have the evidence of our patients. We're not guessing. We know. We know. We, know. we have our own database, and if I have good contrast sensitivity, <coughs> low diagnostic astrotomy or no diagnostic astrotomy, like in my, in my case, no disotopsia, no problems with uh, any range of vision, but a full range of vision, exactly what I need and exactly what I would like to have. Yeah. And I, I, I did cut out a surgery on my mother, and uh, she has full range lenses. <laughs> also, most of our uh, uh, Brazilian distributors uh, uh, have uh, the full range lenses implanted into them as well.